This is Vitno Report by Vintage is the New World, a bite-sized news report about retro computing and retro gaming. By listening and watching this, you'll be able to get up to speed with everything that happens in retro computing and retro gaming. The 2023 edition of MSX Dev already has six games. The contest has been going on for over a few months and already counts with six entries. The last one is Madhouse, a colorful platform where you play a teeth. You must study the enemy's behavior and plan your route through the levels and stairs while dodging the enemies. If you hit one of them, you are dead. When you get to the pile of money bags, you pick one and drop it on your getaway car. Repeat it until you get all the money and go to the next house. The game was created for the MSX2 with 128k of RAM and MSX music for the background tunes. Although the controls could be a little bit more precise for my old hands, it's a fast, fun and stronger contender. Do you know you can now buy a modern version of the classic Amiga tank mouse? As the Amiga News website reported a while ago, the Polish designer Lukas Remis, or Remis has had successfully finished a Kickstarter campaign to re-release a wireless Commodore mouse 1352. Now, the mouse is generally available to anyone willing to pay 46 euros plus shipping. For that price, you can choose between beige and black and use the mouse on any modern computer via Bluetooth. If you want to use it on your retro computer though, like the Amiga, Atari ST or Commodore 64, you must also buy the DB9 to USB adapter for 25 euros. For more information, head over to tank-mouse.com. Since we are talking about Amiga, the British magazine Amiga Addict just released the 20th issue. Among other features, this issue explores Andy Warhol's relationship with creating art on the Amiga and how he helped forge the platform's creative identity. To make it complete, the magazine also has an exclusive interview with Amiga World magazine's co-founder and editor Guy Wright, who interviewed Warhol in 1986 before the iconic artist's passing. The magazine is available at amiga-addict.com. On the software development side of things, I have some news for the Commodore 64 enthusiasts. If you ever want to undust your Pascal skills and build a program or game for the Commodore 64, there is a new option for you. Syntax Error Software has released PASS 6502, a Pascal cross-compiler targeting 6502-based machines. PASS 6502 currently works for the Commodore 64 and has limited support for the BBC Micro. The author plans to extend it and add support for other machines in the near future. You can check for more details and download it at syntaxerrorsoftware.itch.io. Floppy Days podcast released a new episode covering the ZX Spectrum. Randy Kindick has released the last episode of his seven-part series covering the ZX Spectrum. He and his guest co-host PJ Evans cover books, software, ads, modern upgrades, emulation, buying one today, community, and websites. With the end of this series, Floppy Days Podcast now has the most comprehensive audio coverage of Sinclair's little machine that took England by storm back in 1982, with more than 7 hours about the subject. You can listen to this and all previous episodes by accessing flopdays.leapsin.com. And that's all for the news for this week. If you like this format, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video, or if you are listening to this, make sure you can review and comment and send feedback to vintageisthenewold at gmail.com. Thank you, and see you next time.